back with Jared. I'm Jackie on the People Chronicles. Jared, we left things off with, you know, a sad time in your life and, you know, a a time that people don't want to think about. And there's a lot of history that you have in Berks County, but yet you chose to come back here and you chose to teach other people that it's not so bad. Mm -hmm. So tell us how you got over the anger, the sadness, how you moved forward. I moved forward basically because I had to, that was the turning point in my life, obviously. Um, and there's a, a word called epiphany where one morning I just woke up and I said, you know what, Jared, you can either keep going on like this, like stressed out and deal with your anxiety, or you could do what the man upstairs put you here to do. Because I've always had a, many people say I've always had a way with words in person and in the studio. So I get more joy out of making other people smile than I do sometimes for myself. So I just tried to put that into everything that I did. And I had a lot of kids that looked up to me and I mean, and they still do from the music and even from my basketball days where, and like I said, I lived here my whole life. So it's like, I know everyone here from generations up and down. And I just felt that was my purpose, you know, like um, to be able to just give back and, and to just do it selflessly instead of selfishly, you know, cause I never been a selfish person. Um, I've always been that friend that if you were in my inner circle, if if you needed ninety nine dollars and I only had a hundred, it was yours. Like that's take that. And I don't even expect that back. Just I don't even expect it back in a money way. Just if I need someone to talk to one day, you being my best friend, be there for me. That's your way of paying back the ninety nine dollars I gave you. So I've always been that type of person and especially with kids because I could fully relate to that kid right now that comes in from school anxious to show his his mom the report card and she's either not there or, or the dad isn't there to be at your sporting events i was that kid you know not um my mom was always there for me but we had our ups and downs we struggled i went to school with my free lunch card um i had the what a lot of people didn't know um i would go to school and everybody said i dressed nice and my sneakers were nice but little did they know every time i got home every day from school i had my little toothbrush and i was scrubbing <laughs> them making sure they were clean because i didn't know where the next pair was coming from but um just growing up from that different era, man, it was like, um, it's the discipline, you know, like I wasn't, I can't sit here now and act like I was an angel as a teenager, you know, like I was mouthy and stuff like that. But I come from the era where when my mom was at work, the neighbors had the same permission to discipline me. But nowadays, like I see a lot of the parents now are more like friends with the, with their children as compared to parents. And, um, who knows, maybe that's where things went wrong and kids are starting to go downhill now. It might be because of the music. It might be because of the internet. I just, I don't know. I just know that as long as um, I can keep giving back and keep speaking to as many kids as possible, if I change one or two people's lives for the better, then I've did with my job. And I mean, I'm never gonna stop trying to make Reading a more positive place, but um, I'm pretty much a man of numbers and stats like that. We do a lot of uh, candlelight vigils and peace marches and stuff like that, but we all read Reading Eagle and see that it has continued to keep getting worse. But being someone whose roots is here, and I, I'm so prideful of Reading, Pennsylvania, musically, life-wise, and everything else, I'm going to do my best to never give up. I don't know the word quit, whether it's music, basketball, or even trying to get back and do something positive. And it's not only Reading, it's all of Berks County, like, I've evolved now and I've advanced a little bit now where it ain't just people from Reading that appreciate me, you know? So I speak all of for all of Berks County PA because at the end of the day, we're the, we're the diamond in the rough, you know? Like there's so much talent here musically and, and, and athletically and we always get overlooked minus people like Danielle and Taylor Swift. They're like the main ones that really did it. But there's a couple other people too, like Stu Jackson and people like that that I look up to, John Gilmore, Chad Henney, there's some that made it out, but there's, I, I hope um, that I'm not the only motivation for some of the kids out there that are saying if J-Rock got here, then we can too, because there's other people if they just look, you know, it just isn't only me, even someone like you guys, like you are all awesome too in your own way, and and I'm just, I don't know, that's just me, man, I don't know. That was well said. I don't well know said. any other way to Humble, really <laughs> honest, and, and you know what, uh, so down to earth. But Jared, yeah. you, you know, as everyone knows, there is violence. There will always be violence. Yes. There are drugs. <clears throat> there will be drugs. But what do you say to, to the younger generation that has so much peer pressure 
and they really don't know which way to turn and they're so far involved they don't know how to get out like what can you tell them to help them at the point you're at right now okay um two days ago i went to the children's home in allentown and spoke to the kids out there and what i told them i said guys you're going to face some adversity in life and no matter if you got money or if you're broke or whatever you're going to face some times in life where you don't even understand why it happened because that's life life happens but I tell the young kids, and this message is for all the kids and even teenagers and even young men and women listening, find something to balance you out. Like I thank God every day that when I was real young, going through poverty and my hard times at home, I had basketball. Um, and now as, as a young man, I have music. So when life starts kicking my butt and I start getting stressed out, I have music. Find something that you truly have a passion for doing. I noticed that there's a lot of kids out there that are too prideful unless it's sports or music to show the rest of their peers that they have a passion for that. You know, like for instance, a 14 year old that just happens to be really like a 14 year old male um, that really happens to be real good at cooking. He wouldn't really want to show his friends that because in their mind, cooking isn't cool at 14 or being a cook. You're either an athlete or a musician of some sort. So I told them kids find something to balance you out because when life gets down, you need something to really balance you out or something to make you think for that split second if you think about going out there and doing something dumb that you're gonna regret the rest of your life. And that's what helped me out. So I <clears throat> don't have all the answers, but all I could do is give them the things that helped me out. You know, I've always had something, a balance there besides just the stress of life and the anxiety of the letdowns and stuff like that. So my, my two things thus far has been music and basketball so all right so tell us about your music now that's what i want to get to you're known for your music and you hardly talked about it yeah. where do you think um the passion comes from for the writing and for the performing of your music do you think that your brothers are watching over you and they inspire you to do a lot of your writing oh absolutely uh, <clears throat> and it's not only my brothers either it's um you know friends family members that might have passed away or even People who had never been to one of my concerts, but they fully support what I do and stuff like that. My motivation for music just comes with, you know, Reading is, and even Berks County is an extremely diverse place. I spent many years getting my name up musically, standing out in front of Sneaker Villa, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and I come from, I'm a little older, so I come from the era before YouTube, before an artist could put a hot video on there and then the next week they're moving their mom into their dream home. I come from the hard way to get there. You know, I come from running in traffic, almost getting hit by cars, giving my CD out to strangers like, my name's J-Rock, whether you like it or not, spread the word here, and just burning up hundreds and thousands of CDs and just giving them out and taking that loss money-wise at first, but then once the buzz start going and people start relating to the music, then I start being able to make a couple dollars off my music. So um, that's pretty much how I got on musically locally, like around here. Like it wasn't a YouTube thing or, <clears throat> or me just doing, excuse me, one song and then um, everybody know about me overnight. Like it was a process for me. I wrote my first song in 1997. And what so, did you write about? Ooh. <laughs> or what do you write about? Um, I write about everything. I, I love storytelling. And um, as far as mainstream hip hop nowadays, um, storytelling isn't as relevant in hip hop. Um, who do you look up to musically? Musically. Oh, man. I love Eminem. I love Jay-Z. I love, um, who else? I love Beyonce, too, but I have a well, different kind of Well, of course you do. Her. But, um, <laughs> nah, That's but right. um, I like Jay-Z. I like Eminem. I like Drake. Um, I like J. Cole, artists like that. I like um, B.O.B. Um, I pretty much listen to anything. Like, if you guys would come to my house now, you might hear a Jay-Z song playing. Then five minutes later, you'll hear some Metallica. And then... Two minutes later, you'll hear some Al Green. Like, I'm extremely versatile with music because I'm a fan of it first. You know, like, I'm a fan of the music. Like, I really love listening to music, even if it's not mine. It's so, therapy. Yeah. That's, and for J-Rock, what is your dream? What is it, Where do you see yourself? What is your dream? Well, <clears throat> everyone wants to get rich. I just want to be happy, stable, and healthy. And I want to be loved, you know, Um just loved and appreciated because like um there's a lot of diamonds in the rough out there and I met a lot of people from my area from Reading but I don't know too many people that are that are that remain optimistic like me I talk to different people every day from different walks of life um different races and different ages and a lot of people 
um, feel comfortable opening up about their life to me. And then when I hear why they're complaining, I'm like, wow, if I can just tell you some a little bit of my story, you who knows what you would have done. So as far as just always being optimistic, no matter what, I haven't met too many people from this area that are like me. And this isn't even like a front for me. This is the real me. This was me before any of the tragedies, too. So. Well, you're a good man, <laughs> and <laughs> we you. wish you nothing but the best for the next chapter in your life. Thank you. Same to you. And um, how about a website so that people can find out more about you? Yeah, I'm on um, I'm on Twitter at Twitter, um, J-Rock, a.k.a. Rocky, R-O-K-Y, um, and Facebook, Jared, J-Rock, Mingia. And I'm on Reverb Nation. Um, it's under J-Rock. When you spell it, make sure you spell it J-R-O-K, and when you spell Rocky, make sure you spell R-O-K-Y. Got it. So. All right. Jared, thank you so very much. Thank we appreciate you it. You're awesome. <laughs> Jared and Jackie on the People Chronicles. Mm -hmm.